Okay, so we had a factor of this quadratic here, which if you'll notice really look like really closely, we've got an A term of one right here. And we've got a B term, which is the center. Usually it's the addition of the inner and outer terms. I'll need to get my new pen here real quick. Inner and outer terms like this. So when you add those two terms together, you get the middle term. And then if you wanted to complete the square, you use this form right here for your C term. So the last constant term is the B, the B value divided by two and then square, all squared at the end. And that helps uh, square out a, um, a quadratic. Okay, so let's, um, let's move on down. So we got this answer yesterday. Everybody should have this already. So let's move on to the next page. And I do have, uh, as a side note, I do have 6.4 printed off already. Um, so we're, we'll probably get into this later today. Uh, solving quadratic form by using form, quadratic formulas. And uh, so if you'll notice here, these numbers are probably not gonna be very easy to deal with as far as factoring. Uh, we can't square root these uh, terms yet. We haven't got it in that format. And so in this case, it's pretty much going to have to be a completing the square. Um, situation. And so we'll move the constant to the right hand side, which is this. That means we move it over here. And so we're going to say x squared minus 2x equals, uh, I should have left a gap right there, but I didn't, equals 7. So if I move that negative 7 over, it becomes a positive 7. Then it says complete the square by adding one half of the uh, coefficient of the x term, um, negative 2, which is right here. So I'm going to circle that. So I'm going to take the negative two and then we're going to square it on both sides. So this, that was kind of a, a lot of explanation for just saying cut it in half and square it. So we're going to say negative two cut in half and squared. So I'm going to add that to this side and I'm going to add negative two cut in half and squared on the other side. So if you were to look at just this part right here, this is actually a, a perfect square. Um, and so let's go back and, and rewrite this. So we've got x squared minus 2x. So this is negative 2 divided by 2 or negative 1. Squared is positive 1. So this is 7 plus 1 on that side. Now we're going to rewrite it again x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 8 on that side. Now we're going to factor the left-hand side as a perfect square. And if you factor this side here, this turns out to be x times x for the first term. Obviously, 1 is only 1 times 1. It can't be anything else. But in order for us to, now if you'll notice, this symbol right here, this, this uh, addition symbol, indicates that our uh, two terms here are going to have the same sign and they're both going to be negative. So in other words, uh, negative one plus negative one is negative two and that's where that comes from. So now we've got it a perfect square here and we can factor, uh, we can solve by taking the square root. All right, so let's do that. Let's get the square root here. And don't forget on the square root side over here, put plus or minus there. That's important because you have actually two answers. Um, here, the square root of eight can actually be two things. It can be both positive and it can be both negative in this case. 
Now remember, you can't have a negative inside the radical uh, because that would make it imaginary. This is, um, it comes back to the, to the uh, fact that the square root of four can be both two and it can be negative two. Now why is that? Because two times two is four and negative two times negative two is four. So we'll get the same thing both ways. So it's the same idea here. That's why it can be both positive and negative. And so now we're gonna square root both sides. This square and that square root cancel. And we have plus or minus the square root of eight on the right hand side. And we add one to both sides. So we're gonna add one here. And we get that right there. All right, so this is my final answer. One plus square root of eight and one minus square root of eight, but I'm gonna leave it in this format here. So it's two answers. All right, so I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. And I'm gonna come down here and read while you're, if you're uh, following me, just uh, I'm gonna read this down here to kind of let you catch up with me. All right, when we need to complete the square for an equation such as this, now remember the difference is A, if A is not one, it, in other words, it could be something else, uh, like two or three or even one seventh. It could be something crazy like that. But um, we must factor the, the value of A before completing the square. So um, what that means, factoring, you remember factoring means you take like 24 and you factor it out to be two times 12, or you can say three times eight. There's several different ways to get the factors of 24. But we're gonna factor um, A, okay? And so let's go in here and work out the details on this. And this will be, we have two more pages left in this section. Um, we'll do one where we have the steps here on the left and one where it's just kind of like a free for all uh, and you, you go for it without any help at all, okay? So let's, let's see what we can uh, do over here. So and I, obviously this little C term is uh, going to mess up the, the problem. And so we're gonna have to move it out of the way in order to make this thing manageable. So we're gonna to have to use completing the square. Now remember, when you hear the words completing the square, you need to automatically think B over two squared, right? You need to think these are synonymous with each other. So, um, trying to get this brighter. Okay, all right. So let's look at this. And so we're gonna move the constant to the right-hand side. And we're gonna do this a little bit quicker uh, this time. So we're moving that, that negative three over to be, become a positive three. We're gonna factor a two on the left-hand side of the equation. So what you can do is you can just divide by two, by, um, by everything basically is what, uh, what what is possible here. You can just divide everything by two. So let's, um, so let's take the two out. What is four divided by two? That's two. And what's three divided by two? That's three over two. You could do that. Now we've got it in a form that's manageable here, okay? I know we have a fraction, but that's okay. We can work that out. So um, now we're going to, um, Remember, that we're completing the square, so we take the middle term, we divide it by two and square it, right? So it says complete the square in, in X, paying close attention to the value that must be added to both sides. So let's do that real quick. Um, let's go here. All right, so now we're going to add something divided by two squared to both sides. What is that something, okay? So remember, it's the B term. So I'm gonna circle the B term. This is what we divide by two and square to make it a perfect square. So I'm gonna put two right there, two right there. So I'm doing the same thing to both sides. Now, um, let's keep going. 
Uh, this, now we're gonna rewrite this to make it a little bit easier to deal with. So what's two divided by two? That's one squared is one. All right, now here comes a little bit of a tricky part here. So this is three over two plus one squared. Um, you know, it might be best to, um, let's see how we can work this out the best way possible. So, so if that's one, okay, if this is actually one, you can rethink one in a smart way. I know this, this looks like two over two is one and squared is one, but look, I can rewrite it, wow. You can actually rewrite it to where it has a common denominator. You see that? So I know it looks like, wow, I just must made a mistake, but no, that's that's actually um, that's actually doable. So um, let's rewrite this. So we're going to common denominator here. So that's five over two. So if we rewrite the whole equation, we get this equals five over two on the right hand side. All right. So if you had just had said one. I'll just prove that to you real quick. All right, so let's go back to our calculator, second look clear. So it had three over two like that. Let's see if I can pull this up to where you can see this, okay. So we had three over two and then we added uh, two over two squared, right? So we get 2.5, right? Well, if uh, three over two, we add two over two, we get the same exact thing, right? I'm just proving to you that that, that little trick right there that I did was not uh, not a mistake. It's just that it's it looks funny. Okay, so right here, um, so factor the left hand side as a perfect square. So we can do that here. So let's do that. These two things are supposed to match length times width should be make a perfect or be equal to make a perfect square. One is one times one. We're going to have the same sign for both. So they're either both gonna be negative or both gonna be positive. But in this case, they're both gonna be positive, right? This middle term tells you what they're gonna be. And so um, now we're gonna rewrite it. X plus one squared equals five over two. And then we square root both sides, just like we always do. So I'm doing this in a shorter uh, format here. So this is gonna be plus or minus five over two. And we've got an issue right here because this would mean that we have a uh, square root denominator and we're gonna to have to rethink that, okay? So uh, we're gonna move the one over to the other side. So this can be negative one plus or minus the square root of five over two, but, um, this is gonna take a minute for us to work out. So give us, give it just a second. And um, I want you to understand that when you have a square root with a fraction inside, that you split the fraction in, into two parts like this. And if you'll notice the bottom is a uh, rational, I mean, irrational. So we need to make sure that this changes. And so we're gonna to have to multiply the bottom by two, you remember the complex conjugate stuff we did a couple of days ago? This is kind of like that. So we're gonna multiply the square root of two on both the bottom and the top. And so we're gonna rewrite this as X equals negative one plus or minus the square root of 10 over two. And so we are done with the final answer there, okay? All right, so, wow, that was a lot of work. Um, uh, and, you know, a couple of tricks involved here. We had to get, the, the main idea was we had to divide everything by two. That was the easiest part, but then it got a little more complex at the bottom. Now let's go work out the, uh, let's go work out the one without any help at all, okay? So if we were to start this problem, just like it looks, now if you aren't, if it didn't say this up here, you would think, okay, what, is there anything common? Is nine, six, or five in common? There is nothing in common between those, okay? So the way you think about this, uh, 
you know, how, how can I handle this? Can I just divide everything by nine? Well, that would be pretty complex right now, right? We'll get to that in a minute. Um, what if you started doing guess and check? You know, if you did guess and check, you could do three X here, three X here, uh, five and one, eight, uh, that's uh, 15 and three. 15 and three do not make six in any way. So, um, you know, then you'd think, oh, well, heck, what is, uh, what is the, that, the next thing I can do? Well, I can try nine and five. Nine and five don't make six. And you, you're sitting here stumped because guess and check doesn't work. Well, that's when completing the square comes in. And so all you do is you take this term right here and you move it over to the other side, all right? So we have nine X squared minus six X equals negative five. So we moved it over and it became a negative. Now at this point, um, we need to add something to both sides. You remember completing the square should be, you should memorize B over two squared. These two things are synonymous with one another. So uh, we're gonna take this negative six and we're going to add it. Um, we're going to cut it in half. So negative six over two, then we're gonna square it, all right? Negative six over two squared on both sides, just like that. Let's zoom in on this so we can see what we got here. Um, I want you squinting at this. All right, so now um, let's rewrite this. Then this right here is a little bit messy and that's messy, so let's fix that. All right, negative six divided by two is negative three. Negative three squared is positive nine. So we just added nine to both sides, okay? Now you see a common term here. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deal with that right now. Um, because it wouldn't be helpful. So we're gonna do rewrite this to make it all neat and nice before we start. Nine take away five is four. Now there's nothing common between all the numbers here. If this number, if this side was zero, we could factor this out and do zero product property. But no, this is not zero. So we gotta, we've gotta work things out a little bit differently here. So what, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to divide by uh, nine. We're gonna divide everything by nine. So we're gonna divide that by nine, divide that by nine, divide that by nine, divide that by nine, okay? I'm getting that nine out of there so that we can square this easily. Um, now, matter of fact, you know, let me scrap that little part right there because when you get to this right here, this actually is a perfect square. That, this is uh, needless. This step right here is, is not necessary, okay? So let's go over here and, and, and write out some things. So a minute ago, I, I showed you that you can divide by that number, but in this case right here, let me just explain something here. 9x is, 9x squared is 3x times 3x, right? This is supposed to be a perfect square. We, we went through all the effort just to make a, a perfect square. Right, so we're going to have the same sign, and they're both going to be negative. Right, so if I take negative nine, oh, something's up here. I must have, uh, uh, th at this point right here, this is a perfect square. Um, negative nine and negative nine would not make negative six, um, so uh. Let me go back and uh, rework this. So instead of 9x, and so you could have one of these sets being 9 times 1. So let's, let's rework this. Let's try 9 times 1 here instead. So let's uh, negative 27 and 3. That's not going to work. So I'm going to scrap that out. Um, so we can try 9x times 1x and then... Uh, Okay, so we could try nine and nine, nine and one here. So that's there, that would be nine and nine, it's still 18, so that's not gonna work. Um, okay, so let's come on down. 
Now, to be honest, you know, it might be a little faster for you to go through and just divide everything by nine and go that way with it. But it, it is a little more brain power, I guess. I don't know. It's the same either way. Um, so I'm going to fold this over so you can see where we're at. So we've tried three, nine, three, one. We've tried nine, nine, one, one. I'm just getting, we're just guessing and checking at this point. All right. So, um, now we can try and we're trying to get six in the middle, right? All right. So, uh, let's see three. Did we try three, 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 three? Yes, we did. We tried three, three, nine, one. We tried nine, one. Okay. Look, let's just go through. I'm going to scrap this, this idea, and I'm going to uh, divide by nine on everything, like I said originally, because I'm running out of time. I don't, want to, I don't want to spend forever doing this. So I have one X, and then we have uh, six over nine, which is uh, two over three X, and then nine over nine is one, and then we have four over nine, which is uh, um, four over nine. It's, it, this does not reduce here. Okay, and so um, something is up. Okay, so what I did, okay, yeah. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, something is up. All right, I'm about to pause just a second. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go back and, re and rehash what I've just done. Uh, to start off with, with the original equation, I move that, that C term over negative to make it negative five. I divided everything by nine to get that A term to turn into one. Um, then I took the B term and I added it to both sides, B cut in half and squared, according to the completing the square. And then um, here I'm going to I rewrote it and then negative two thirds divided by two, all squared turns out to be one ninth. Um, so I added one ninth to both sides. And at this point now I'm factoring out the perfect square, which is X times X here. And nine is three times three, right? One is one times one. So that's where the one third and one third come from. Now in this case here, they're gonna be the same sign and they're both gonna be negative. So they're gonna be there. Now you see how we've got a perfect square. Length times width is the same. All right. Um, now this point right here is really simple. You just take the top, the numerators on top and um, work those out. So it's negative five plus one, that's negative four over nine. And both of those are perfect squares. So this is gonna be nice and neat at the end, okay? All right, so I'm gonna rewrite that as a square. Uh, now we're gonna square root both sides. Uh, and I'm gonna do that without doing the square root step. So I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna, this and that are square. This is the square root of that. Then I'm gonna put plus or minus, like I always do, with a, with a negative four over nine. Now watch out because you've got a negative here. That's a problem, right? This means we're probably gonna have uh, no solution, all right? Or yeah, something like that. Well, we'll look at the graph in a minute. Okay, so uh, we're going to add one third to both sides. So one third plus uh, negative four over nine. Now let's rewrite this. So this is gonna be X equals one third plus or minus the square root of negative four over the square root of nine. Now in this case right here, I did. I was trying to do this in a smart way where um, I didn't have to go through, well, anyway, you'll see what, what's, what's going on. So that negative goes with that four and that uh, nine would not be negative. So that's why I split that up like that, okay? Okay, so plus or minus. Now this, uh, the square root of negative four is going to be two i right? Because the square root of negative one is I. And if I have the square root of negative one times four, 
then I have uh, 2i, right? So the, because it's uh, the square root of 4 is 2. All right, I'm going to cover that up so it won't be so confusing. And I know this is a lot of material, a lot of information. Um, but hey, we're at the end of completing the square, so uh, we're almost through, right? So the square root of 9 is 3. And that's why I, I kept that. Uh, I didn't put the negative with that 9. It's because I wanted to keep that denominator there and make this easy to deal with. Um, so you can combine the denominator here. I'm going to pull this back so you can see this. You can combine the denominator and just keep the top just like it looks. Uh, 1 plus or minus uh, 2i. Now let's look and see what this means. All right. Let's go look and see graphically what this means. The answer would be 1 plus 2i over 3. And the other answer would be 1 minus 2i over 3. All right, so let's go back to the original equation. All right, and let me pull that out of the way so y'all can uh, write for just a minute while I'm typing things out. Second mode clear, y equals, delete, delete, delete. All right, so we're gonna put, um, the original equation was, original equation, There's a bunch of mess there. Okay, so, the original equation was this right here, 9x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. So we're going to come over to the um, calculator. So we're going to put 9x squared plus 6x, I think, or minus 6x. And then uh, plus 5. We're going to graph that. Look at how this uh, how this looks. So, so I'm going to zoom in. So I'm going to go uh, zoom. I think I remember it's like zoom six or or something where the zoom is always easier to do on these TI 84s. Well, it sure is thinking, isn't it? So let's clear that off. Okay, so let's go back to the graph. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit differently. Try to zoom fit, that might help. Okay, you see how it looks like it's touching the, uh, the x-axis? If I go down, well, let's try zoom. Zoom standard. Okay, we'll just have to look at it like this. But you see how it curves right here and it does not touch the y, the x-axis? This means that there would be no solutions here. And that's why that, that i is involved because if you wanted to know what the roots were or the solutions were, or the zeros were to this, if it crosses through x at some point, it doesn't. It's only in your imagination. And so we've got, uh, um, it's an imaginary number. So let's go back and, uh, well, I mean, I say that. It's actually real, but I imagine the words are actually real. And that's been proven. Uh, and I've, proved, I've mentioned that earlier, and I was able to show you how it was real. But that's a story for another day. Okay, so that's, um, let's, uh, let's go on to 9-4 now. And uh, I think we've got enough time to kind of hit the, the, the main topic of 6-4, uh, uh, I'm sorry. And so we just com finished completing the square. And let's go on to um, the next section, which is a lot easier. <laughs> a lot easier for me, anyway. Okay, so uh, because it's just a matter of memorization, and the song goes x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so that is um, pop goes the weasel, math version, right? So this is easy to memorize, all right? I memorized this without the song, but hey, you guys need, to, need the help. So um, let's, get there. let's get through this. We've got left side of the equation, right side of the equation. We're going to have this situation here. 
where where x is equal to that. And so this is the algebra, pretty simple. This is the arithmetic. Um, care and caution must be applied to eliminate careless or arithmetic mistakes. That's uh, uh, right. So let's see. Solve the following quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. Now this, I'm going to be able to go through some of this, but I'm not going to be able to finish this because we are just beginning or we're just about to be through with this lesson. So if you'll notice, um, this right here is not, not easy to, uh, to deal with because if you'll notice, it's not in the format of AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. That's standard form of a quadratic equation. Well, this is not in that form because the seven is moved over. So when you, if we had needed to, to move that over, all right, We'll pull that seven back over here. We see that the C term, the constant term is actually negative seven, not positive seven. So we're gonna write the quadratic formula, X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A, okay? And so that's gonna be the easiest part if you remember your, to, to sing that in your head as you're writing it, you don't even have to think about it. Uh, the substitute the values of a, b, and c into the equation. So we're going to put now what I usually do is I start off like this and I put parentheses for every single letter. Every single letter. Parentheses, parentheses, parentheses for every single letter. All right. So we're going to put the b term here negative five, negative five. That happens twice. We're gonna put the A term, it happens twice, one, one. You see that, one, one. And then C term equals negative seven. And so now we're gonna simplify this mess right here. And we've got one minute to do it, so let's do it. So we've got X equals five plus, oh, that's plus or minus, I made a mistake already, check that out. All right, so we've got 25 plus 28, okay, so that's, 25 positive and that's 28 positive and so we're going to rewrite this by plus or minus the square root of four what's that 40 plus 13 is 53 divided by two and i think we're pretty much done all right so there's two solutions all right how do i know that because of the plus or minus symbol there okay um the, the solutions are real. They're not complex. There was no I involved. And in, if there were an I involved, you would have a negative 53 there. So uh, the solution, 53 is, uh, I believe, a prime number. So it has to stay that way. So the solution is 5 plus the square root of 53 over 2 and 5 minus the square root of 53 over 2. And we're done. Okay, so that was uh, pretty straightforward and easy, how to do the quadratic formula uh, on a quadratic equation. Now, remember, before we went, I'll leave you with this, all right? You remember that problem that we just had trouble with, with the nine and the six and the five and all that? Well, you can easily do every single quadratic problem using this formula right here. Every single quadratic formula can be done using this right here. You don't have to know uh, completing the square. You don't know how, to, you don't have to know square rooting or factoring. You don't have to do guess and check. If you're not comfortable with it, if you are comfortable with it, go with it because it's faster. But this right here works for every single quadratic equation on the planet, okay? Uh, you may come out with an imaginary or complex um, answer, but um, this works every time. So if you want, if you want the one thing that works all day long, it's this right here, and you need to memorize this song. Okay. Now, completing the square. There's plenty to be said about completing the square because it's very simple. All you would do is you would cut five and a half and square it right on both sides, and then you factor that out. Blah blah blah. Square it both sides move on so i'm going to leave you today with the quadratic formula all right and we're doing six four so i just did page 266 if um if you get a chance before 
the next couple of days or before. Well, today's Wednesday, right? So um, I'll see y'all on Monday, but go ahead and uh, try and work some of this out and see if you can do this without me. Uh, maybe just pick one of these questions here and see if you can answer that without me using the, 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 uh, the quadratic formula. This section is gonna go very fast, very fast. I'm probably gonna do two or three sections in one the next time we talk. But if there's any questions before we leave, um, type them in the chat. Otherwise, I'm fixing to head on, all right? I'll see y'all in just a minute. Those are you who have geometry.